Did I in fact take the upper receiver from my $6,400 high-end build and put it on Alex Anderson lower receiver budget build? Yes, yes I did. And why did I do that? Because well, maybe some things are just as good. Let's talk about Anderson Manufacturing. How's it going everybody? Clint here today with Classic Firearms coming at y'all with another manufacturer review. This time of one that has actually been highly requested because well, a lot of you are all into building your first AR or maybe just building supplemental ARs. Uh, and this manufacturer that we're going to talk about today is one that has been highly requested because a lot of you all see these great prices and it's like, well, are they actually good for the price? Some would say good enough, right? Uh, and, and maybe some others would say, you know, uh, different terms. But here's something I can say about Anderson Manufacturing. Based out of Kentucky, they've been building AR components, AR rifles, AR accessories, all sorts of stuff for a little over 30 years now. And they've actually done some pretty interesting things, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit, like non-lubricated, no-need lubrication rifles. We'll talk about those in a moment. But Anderson Manufacturing, well, let's just put it this way. They're affordable and they work. Uh, and it's also part of our current giveaway, which is Alex gun that did work, which, you know, hey, that's, that's good, right? So, like I said, we've been shooting this guy, uh, the AM-15, they've got the AM-10, even at AM-9, which is just their Anderson Manufacturing 15, AR-15 style or series of rifles and so on and so forth. But anyway, we, saw, we shot this in the AR build series and it did well. Alec actually performed really well with this gun. And it, it being a brand new gun, uh, straight assembly and everything else like that, you are gonna have a little bit of like a break-in period, which <laughs> it's definitely been there now. And we didn't use a whole lot of lubrication on this guy. In fact, it's pretty freaking dry, but it's not even one of their uh, no lubrication needed rifles. Before I even start talking about that, some of you, again, if you're new to the channel, you haven't seen our build series yet, don't know what I'm talking about there, go check it out. It's a pretty good time. Uh, I built a gun, Matt got an out of the box gun, and Alec built this gun. Uh, being a little bit more budget friendly, I went for the more expensive option. And we pretty much face off against each other for about six episodes. And some of you, like I said, if you're new, you're probably looking at this and wondering why or what the heck is going on there. And well, you just gotta go watch the build series and find out. It's, it's Alex's way of um, attaching a light to your rifle and a very affordable option, so. Anyway, shooting the gun, however, went very well. I've shot this rifle plenty enough now and the Anderson parts that are in it, which include the upper and lower, all ran just fine, which is good. Granted, a lower receiver I kinda look at as as long as it holds all the parts and everything fits and it's to spec and what more could you ask for, really? Uh, it, if it doesn't fit, if you can't drop a trigger into it or your, your takedown pins don't fit, then you've known you've run into an issue. But hey, having played with Anderson quite a bit a little bit now, it's been just fine. And that's ultimately what they are. They're just a more budget or affordable option to building your AR or even buying a complete rifle right out of the box if that's what you want to do. Granted, are there more expensive, arguably better things? Yeah, absolutely. You can always spend more money if you want to, but at the end of the day, is it absolutely necessary? I don't know, up to you guys. I'll let y'all fight that out down in the comment section below. My personal point of view is, I look at it this way. If there's at any point in time I'm gonna use something to where I think I might use something to defend my life with, I'm not gonna spare any expense. If I'm looking to build something to train with, practice with, plank with, then sure, right? I will definitely go out and <laughs> not blow thousands of dollars on some high-end build if I plan on, I don't know, rubbing it through the dirt and everything else. I feel like something like this would be a very practical training rifle that I wouldn't mind getting dinged, dented up, or whatever else. Or if I want I like more of an everyday carry AR, which might sound ridiculous to some of you, I don't. Second Amendment, bro. And so something like this might be a good idea for you. If you're worried about scratching, getting blemishes on a rifle, then well, 
first of all, I guess you don't plan on using it as what's it's intended for. So don't buy a more budget friendly rifle that can take a beating and keep on shooting, I guess. So that's how I feel about it. So Anderson Manufacturing, I talked about before how they've got some really innovative ideas, one of which has been around for quite a few years now, and it's their RF-85 treated uh, parts and rifles. I don't have one here with me, but it's very interesting because it's they're claiming that these are parts and rifles that require no lubrication whatsoever. In fact, I read in the manual that when cleaning your RF-85 rifle, to make sure when you assemble it and put it all back together that it is completely dry. It's a treatment that they do to the metal that is like self-lubricating. It's very interesting and when you think about the AR system and it being direct impingement is pretty dirty. And having shot plenty of ARs, let's just say that weren't uh, well lubricated, did have some issues, even out of more expensive manufacturers and stuff. Once you add some lube, all of a sudden things starts rocking and rolling. But Anderson is saying with their RF-85 treated rifles, don't need it. Fairly interesting if you ask me. There are several other videos out there that you can watch where several thousands of rounds have gone through these guns without any lubrication and they seem to work pretty well. It's pretty interesting stuff. So I do like the fact that, well, innovation is cool. Self-lubricating metal, that's pretty wild. I can only imagine how wild the comment section is getting right now, but you know, whatever, you guys, you guys do you, okay? Just help our engagement, it's fine. But anyway, as far as my personal opinion on Anderson Manufacturing goes, I don't think there's anything wrong with this manufacturer. If you're looking again for affordable parts, I know several people that have built these, built full on rifles out of all Anderson parts, which include upper, lower barrels, parts kits. You got the oops kits, which I think are phenomenal because well, they're of all the parts that you'll lose when building a rifle. Go ahead and just like this video if you keep several of those oops kits on hands for the inevitable. You know, when those takedown pins or springs and retention pins just go flying across the room and trying to find it is just not gonna happen. I'm sure my vacuum cleaner has a lot of, I could probably build my a whole AR out of all the stuff I've vacuumed up before. Minus a barrel and bulk carrier group, you know what I mean? But anyway, so there you have it. I know several people, myself included, that have played with Anderson and it works just fine. And I know a lot of you guys have probably had similar success stories. If you haven't, well, sound off down in the comment section below. Let all of these new shooters that are out here kind of looking at these great holiday deals and everything else on products like this and your thoughts. Personally, if you're like me and well, every now and then you just feel like tinkering and building a new AR, throwing on ridiculous stuff and treating it like trash and it still perform, absolutely, I'm gonna go budget friendly. If I want something a little bit more pretty, something that might be a safe queen for a while before I get bored with it and sell it, then I might go a little bit more expensive. I don't know, depends on how I'm feeling for the day. But I'll leave it off at that. And I'm really curious on shooting the RF-85 and torture testing one of those myself, maybe. Let me know if you'd like to see a video like that down in the comment section below. Also too, something else I noticed, and we covered this in the forge markings video not too long ago. Uh, I noticed, and in that video I said that there are some manufacturers that will source um, parts from different forges. Depends on availability, cost, so on and so forth. So for instance, on the complete rifle, I noticed we've got the square forge mark, which is your what, brass and aluminum forge enterprises, I believe, the BAFE, <laughs> similar to a, another agency we don't talk about. But uh, anyway, so that is what's on the full build here, but on the stripped Anderson upper, we've got a Cerro forge mark, which is just your little keyhole. So again, just availability, cost at that point in time, whatever they, whatever fills or whatever's right for the manufacturer at that point is probably what they'd go with. And of course, Anderson offers all sorts of different products. If you're looking for complete uppers, complete lowers, like what you see right here with different accessories or furniture, they've got it, so that's pretty sweet. If you're looking for completely 80% kits, uh, they've got that as well. They've even got the forge kits, or the mill kits, I should say, which actually kind of show you how to mill out your own AR, which is completely legal. If you want to build your own rifle, 
from an 80% piece of metal, then yes, you absolutely can. There's nothing illegal about that. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So is suppressor ownership. So is owning machine guns. You can even own a tank in this country. God bless America. Unfortunately, you gotta pay a lot of taxes and permits and stuff like that. Not what the forefathers intended, but here we are. Anyway, so I'll leave it off there. My personal experience with Anderson has always been very favorable. I haven't had any of them fail on me. Uh, and that's as much as I could say, really. Like this build right here, that is Alex build, as seen in Alex Adventures, you know? Uh, but this right here is part of our current giveaway, which is three guns. You guys wanted three separate winners, so that's what's gonna happen. One individual is going to win Alex build with one individual is gonna win Alex build with the Anderson build that you see right here. Does have a ballistic advantage barrel in it. His very high speed Browning flashlight held on by pocket clip and Ranger band and a bunch of other affordable parts, including actually a very decent optic, the Swamp Fox optic here. I think that's the Trihawk, which is a sweet little prism guy. Included in this is not only this guide to one winner, but also this guy, the Stag Arms. This is the Stag 15. This was Matt's put together. And we've got on this guy right here, whew, got the Aero Precision breech charging handle. I say, woo, because that thing's got a lot of surface area, a lot of grip there. And also it has both of the uh, handles here for you to get a grip on. But <laughs> anyway, Vortex Crossfire Red Dot. Streamlight on this guy as well, coming with the Sylvan Arms sling. And of course we've got mine, which is obviously my personal favorite. This is the high-end build. There's a lot on these guns and there's a lot listed here. So I'll just go over the basics really quick. Proof Research Barrel, Trigicon ACOG RMR setup, Geisley Trigger, Radian Lower, Vltor Upper, B5 System Stock, BCM Grip, Mod light flashlight with the mod button and we've got Knight's Armament uh, sights, Geisley rail, Geisley buffer system, JP Enterprises adjustable gas block and JP Enterprises adjustable buffer. I know I said I was going to hit on the big things and I guess all of it's kind of a big thing so. Anyway, and also to the Warrior Poet Society sling, which is actually a pretty sweet sling. So John, I didn't break your sling, if that's what you were wondering, like I said at the beginning of the series. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. Make sure you utilize the code word down below to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. I know you guys like it. And I'll see you guys down in the comment section all about Anderson Manufacturing. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.